Okay, in this video, we're going to continue our linear programming solution for a staffing problem. The question here is on the left hand side of the screen. If you need to go back and review how we write our objective function or our decision variables or our constraints, please see the previous video. But in this video, we're going to solve this problem using Solver in Microsoft Excel, and we are working on a MacBook. So let's go ahead and just um, set up our, our solution. So as always, we're going to first identify our decision variables. So the decision variables were full-time staff starting at 8 a.m. And we labeled this as F1. In our previous question, we had full-time staff starting at noon and we labeled these individuals as F2, and we had full-time staff starting at 4 p.m., and we labeled these individuals as F3. We had part-time staff, part-time staff starting at 8 a.m., and we labeled this these individuals as P1. Let's just format our cells a little bit here so that um, our text is wrapped so that we get a little bit more space. <clears throat> we have part-time staff starting at noon, and these were P2. Part-time staff starting at 4 p.m. and we labeled these individuals uh, P3 and we had part-time staff starting at 8 p.m. and we labeled this decision variable P4. So if you need to go back and review our decision variables again please see the previous video and again we'll just format our cells here so that we can get a little bit more on our screen. We remember that we have a cost of each of these individuals and we calculated that cost when we calculated our objective function. And we said that part-time staff worked for eight hours and they made $17.50 an hour. So equals 17.50 times eight, which is 140. And we can do the same thing for those three variables because they are both full-time staff. So if they start at noon and work for eight hours, they'll still get paid $140. And our part-time staff made $15 an hour and they worked for four hours. And we'll do, we'll just drag and drop. So that fills our, our uh, cost across our decision variables. So let's go ahead and we'll just format this cell just to remind us what our decision variables are. So. We'll put a nice thick border around our decision variables and we will use a background color of yellow just to remind us. And we have our total cost. And just as a reminder, what are we looking to do here? Our, we have a minimization objective function. So minimize, um, we'll just write the abbreviated version here, F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus 60 times P1 plus P2 plus, oops, plus P3 plus P4, right? That's just our abbreviated objective function, <clears throat> but that is reflective of what is going on here. I'll, make this a little bit smaller, but I won't make it too small so we can all still see what's going on. Now we have to label our constraints. So we have our constraints. And if we go back to the previous video, we remember that the number um, staffing requirement, um, we're going to say 8 a.m. to noon. Again, we can make this just a little bigger so that we can keep this nice and clean. So our staffing requirement from 8 a.m. to noon, we said that F1 plus 
P1. We'll label this our left hand side and right hand side. Right, so our staffing requirement from 8 a.m. to noon, F1 plus P1 must be greater than or equal to six. Staffing requirement noon till 4 p.m. And let me just fix the spelling mistake here, requirement. <clears throat> noon to 4 p.m., we said that F1 Full-time staff who start at 8 p.m. but work until 4 p.m. Plus full-time staff who start at noon plus our part-time staff who start at noon must be greater than or equal to 8. We have staffing requirement from 4 p.m. until 8 p.m. And we said that we have Full-time staff who start at noon and work till 8 p.m. We have full-time staff who start at 4 and work till midnight. And we have part-time staff who start at 4 p.m. And we said that this must be greater than or equal to 12. Then we have our staffing requirement from 8 p.m. till midnight. And we said that we had full-time staff who start at 4 p.m. and work till midnight. And we have part-time staff who start at 8 p.m. And this value must be greater than or equal to six individuals. We also had a requirement of the number of full-time staff um, versus part-time consultants on duty. So we said that there must be at least two full-time consultants for every part-time consultant on duty. So we said that uh, F1 was greater than or fi was greater than or equal to 2pj meaning that we need at least two full-time staffers for every one part-time consultant so we'll say uh, f f versus p uh, 8 a.m 8 a.m to noon and we labeled this constraint in a previous on the previous video as one F1 minus two P1 must be greater than or equal to zero, right? We just put this in standard form to help us. We'll do the same thing. So full-time versus part-time from noon until 4 p.m. And we said that <clears throat> F1 plus F2 minus 2p2 must be greater than or equal to zero. We have full-time versus part-time from 4 p.m. till 8 p.m. And we said that F2 plus F3 minus 2p3 must be greater than or equal to zero. And then finally, full-time versus part-time from 8 p.m. to midnight, we said that F3 minus 2P4 must be greater than or equal to zero. If you are unsure about why we did the constraints like this, please go back and see the previous video. Um, it will help you understand in a lot more detail. So, um, now we'll just finish our constructing our model here. So we're going to write our objective function. So equals sum product. We're going to highlight our costs and we're going to multiply them by our decision variables. As always, we will lock our decision variable cells, our reference cells, and then we will close our bracket. Same thing here. We'll write sum product highlight across our rows and then by our decision variables and again locking our reference cells of our decision variables so your equation should look something like this you hit enter and then 
you get the thick black cross and then you double click and it will automatically populate all the way down. So now that we have our solution nicely set up in Excel, we can go to Solver and we can solve this problem. So let's click on Solver. Once you click on Solver, uh, a nice window like this should pop up. So the first thing is we're going to set our objective cell. So our objective cell is where we have our total cost set up. Um, in this case, we're looking to minimize costs. So we're gonna click on minimize. By changing the decision variables in which cells, well, we're just gonna highlight our yellow decision variable cells. And then we're going to add our constraints. So in this case, our constraints, our left-hand side, whoop, you don't see that window. We have our constraint window open up. So our left-hand side, in this case, they are all greater than or equal to our right-hand side. So we can just do this all in one shot. We're gonna click OK. Your window should look like this. We're going to make sure that we have make unconstrained variables non-negative, and we're going to select simplex LP. We're going to click Solve. You'll get a pop-up window that looks like this. So solver found a solutions, all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied, that's great. So then we're going to ask it to keep the solver solutions and we're gonna ask for an answer report. We're gonna say okay. And we'll see that our answer report has been nicely formatted for us, which is great. And if we go back we see that our final value, oh, we don't have to go back. We can just look at it here. We can see that our final value, so our minimal cost possible is $2,160. And we see that um, we're going to want four full-time staff starting at 8 a.m., two full-time staff starting at noon, six full-time staff starting at four, and then we have two part-time staff starting at eight, two part-time staff starting at noon, two part-time staff starting at four, and we have no part-time staff starting at eight. We'll notice that we have a number of binding constraints. There are two constraints that are non-binding or not binding. So that is the full-time staff versus part-time staff from noon to 4 p.m. That's not binding. And our full-time staff versus part-time staff from 8 p.m. till midnight is also non-binding. Something that you might want to look at is that we don't have any part-time staff working from 8 p.m. to midnight, so this constraint makes sense that it would be not binding, right? All of our staff who are working from 8 p.m. to midnight are full-time staff who started at 4 p.m. In fact, uh, we have six full-time staff starting at 4 p.m. So there you have it. You can see this nicely. Um, our solution is nicely here, along with our cost. If you wanted to format this into dollars, you absolutely could do that. Um, we can also make these variables dollars as well, since they are dollars. But there you have it. Um, we've solved a relatively straightforward staffing problem uh, using Microsoft Excel. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped make business analytics easy, consider giving the video a like. And if you need additional help with business analytics, please consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.